Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening and welcome to the second part of my community talk show on uh, Radio Aapke Awaz. You can listen to me on www.aapkeawaz.co.uk uh, on, and tune in on the Radio Garden app uh, to advertise and uh, sponsor our program. The number, is, as always, is 07944-808-141. Um, in my second uh, part of the show, uh, as I said to you, I've got a double bill. I've got two brothers um, who are from the local here in in, uh, in, uh, in Birmingham, in uh, Small Heath in Birmingham. And um, on my on my left hand side, I've got Ali Akbar. And then on, on my far side, I've got brother Safran Hussain. And this part of the program will be talking in English. And the conversation will be in English because I thought this week I'd just try and break it up a little. And uh, we, we talk about uh, some community issues. And as you know, um, community uh, cleanliness and environment cleanliness is uh, close to my heart. And, uh, um, you know, I, I don't think you, you guys would uh, would like to uh, listen to me all evening. So for this is the reason why I, I like to bring in uh, different people. And for this reason, uh, this is why uh, we, we've got uh, uh, some different people and put a different stance on things. So between now and nine o'clock, inshallah, we'll be covering uh, something different. Brothers, um, welcome welcome to my show. And uh, thank you very much for uh, agreeing to come on to my show. It's always a pleasure to talk to some local people in, in, in the area. Uh, Brother, brother Ali, um, waste warriors, come on, enlighten <laughs> me. What, what's it all about? Assalamu alaikum, brother Amin. Uh, thank you for inviting us to your show, Akibaz Radio. Uh, it was a great opportunity to be on the platform. Uh, first time we've had a radio appearance. Um, and I've got brother Safraz here. You wanna? Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Radio Up, uh, general public. Assalamu alaikum. May Allah. Uh, Allah's blessings be upon you all. Uh, we are very grateful to be on the show and hopefully we can inspire other people. And uh, we are also in need of inspiration. No, mashallah, mashallah. You're rubbing shoulders with me. I'm rubbing shoulders with you guys. I'm looking for inspiration from you guys this evening. So yeah. mashallah. Um, one of the things we, we all do as community activists, we want to bring a change in our environment. We want to bring a change in people's habits, in people's attitudes. And um, this is why uh, the, the, the way I do it in my community talk show is bringing some people from the area who are doing fantastic community work. But unfortunately, um, the mainstream uh, media uh, don't like that type of stuff. So that's why we use this platform to bring the, this, this type of information on. And mashallah, you'll be surprised how many people viewing and listening to my programs and more. Furthermore, uh, a lot of this is because we're on the World Wide Web. Uh, you'll be surprised how many people actually pick up the, uh, these programs. So it's, uh, for me, it's, 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 it's quite, a, quite a challenge to uh, make sure that uh, we, we share the best that we've got in our inner city Birmingham and uh, Waste Warriors. So enlighten me, please. Yes, so should I be about how we started? Mashallah, from the, from the beginnings, what, what is it? Uh, what's it all about? Okay, so thank you. Uh, Waste Warriors, uh, basically with a, a litter picking organization, which we first started was was me and my, my brother Bilal. And we, we was basically not happy with the way Smalley Park looked. So we started from Smalley Park. And then we decided to have an initiative just uh, go out with some bags and just continue to start cleaning the local park. And after that, we didn't have no equipment, we never had no litter pickers, no litter picking hoops. We didn't have the actual proper bags, which the city council meant to give you, you know. Uh, we just had kitchen bags from the kitchen, uh, took some from mum. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically you use the household waste collection, <laughs> mashallah, again. That's, that, again, that's, yeah. that's, uh, uh, Start uh, from uh, home. Stop, st you know. Started from home. Starting you know? from home. And uh, then uh, my brother, you know, and there's some day, uh, like locals was inspired by this from the first day. They're really happy that who are you know the two guys here, you know, with the we had our orange hibiscus on, and they go, you know, they removing rubbish. They go, well, where's your equipment? Where's litter pickers? And we were like, okay, litter pickers. We <laughs> we never really paid attention to how waste is removed, you know, because I think that's with everybody. We're so busy, 
and we need to kind of like appreciate like you know with the waste prevention team they come out and the, the sea council they do come out i have to have a bit of a background as well slightly when uh, with i worked with the baby sea council as well when we had to put the wheelie bins when the plastic bags were yeah, yeah, I remember. replaced with the wheelie yeah, yeah, bins. Yeah, I remember. And there was a strike happened that time. So we, we were had to come in as in um, small Italian. Yes, where, yes, I remember small Italian. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and actually, actually, uh, cut a long story short, yeah. that actually made the national news and the lo local and national news because yes. the community got together and says, right, we're not having this because there was a two, three week strike. We're not having this. And you were like picking up those black bags on the back of a van and you were taking them to the recycling center, mashallah. Yes, I do remember that. That's right. So yeah, I do, I do, I do have a go at the local media, national media, but that definitely made because this was again evidence of community empowerment. The community got up and said, we are not having in this we're gonna make a change and mashallah you did at that particular time that's when bearded bros came in yeah so bearded bros every everybody knows with yeah. the navid yeah, yeah i have good relationships with yeah. Navid, yeah and imran yeah hamid yeah. which is uh now there's a uh, yeah i don't go too much no no no, <laughs> no 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 <laughs> but they were all together did you, did you? also with friends of smolly park yes. Muhammad. yeah and uh so they were all together basically these were like the uh the expandables which I like to say, yeah, 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 you, got, yeah. you got all the all stars there. Yeah. So we were like, you know, I had no idea about this. So it wasn't even planned, uh, like you know, to you know have some limelight or or it was about publicity, or nothing it was nothing like that. We just wanted to go in, and we just wanted to just make a bit of a change around Smalley Park. That's how it started. And afterwards, then he, I got my uncle Safraz next to me here. I said, I said, let's like you know, let's go to Adley Park, which is. The one we did recently. Where That's I right, yeah, it's on our patch, the, yeah. Yeah, on the patch. Then we started getting my other family members involved. I started meeting other people from other groups which existed, which I had no idea about. And this is all going during the COVID time. COVID, yeah. So we were also looking for a reason to get outside as well because yeah, yeah. there was a lockdown. Yeah. And at that particular lockdown, you can remember, right, when yes. the lockdown, we, we couldn't even go outside because you had, it was like a curfew, you know. If you go outside, you had to give a valid reason. So we were having a good reason to go outside. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was. A, so, and and I, I, I remember, I specifically remember that um, um, we, we were in a lockdown situation and uh, uh, through through my, my, my work environment, whatever you, we were working from home and we were still told to go out and exercise and I tried to go out early in the morning. And I distinctly remember to say, right, I'm going to get my litter picking tools out to get my bag. I'm going to walk with my high vis jacket. That way, no one's going to stop me. I'm out in the back, but I'm doing a little bit of community work. But it was a way of saying, I need my escape. I need my uh, escape. Yeah. That's what it was for us. Mashallah. So we just wanted our escape. Yeah, yeah. And just like the way you said it, and we had that. And it was just the way, so we carried on. So I've got some uh, brief places. So it's all around Birmingham. So yeah. we also wanted to go around Birmingham, historic places. We want to bring a bit of Birmingham. Um, like you know, UB40 around Mosley area. Yeah, yeah. You got Dudston Manor where Uncle Swaz can tell you a bit more. Where you know that was your yes. school. That's my you, school. Uh, Dudston Manor it's called Heartlands. Yeah, I, I remember it well. I'm a former <laughs> former graduate from that school. So, much I remember it well. So you know, it's known for musical youth. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And, and guess what? They were in my class as well, so there you are. So, <laughs> so, so, so there you are. I do. I do. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, uh, a lot of the history around Birmingham is historic. Uh, there is, there is, for example, uh, UB40. UB40 was the card that was given to you when you uh, went on to sign on um, uh, for employment benefits, and UB was an employment benefit. 40 was the name of the card, and because those individuals signed on for benefits, that's the name of the band. And look, look where they got. Um, so yeah, there, there are so many historical places in, in Birmingham, but if you bring your, your litter picking uh, activities around those areas, you get an opportunity to, to get to see Birmingham, but more importantly, you're doing something well for the community that, as well. That's right. Uh, show some history to yeah. Birmingham. So like we also was looking at um, J.R. Tolkien. Yeah, yeah, Road, yeah, and, the uh, rings, Hall Green, yeah. Hall, Hall Green, also parts of Hagley Road, we was planned to push further down that way. And uh, we've, we're basically trying to, so what, uh, the mission, initial plan of the Waste Warriors was, while we're going to Litter Pick events, we tell some Birmingham history. Yeah, that excellent, was, excellent, that's a good idea. That, that was the plan, so get people, you know, get people interested, 
And and you know, it's not like a boring thing. You know, someone says, you know what, come on. It's not. You know, there's a lot of criticism um, about it. You know, uh, you know, this council job, but this is our city. You know, this is home for us. Yeah. So we take a lot of passion and pride into it, and we we met a lot of lovely people on the way. Um, there's also um, before, I'll just give you a bit further. So we stopped at uh, Delta Manor School, where which was a that a music band, which you musical yeah. musical, musical youth, yeah. musical youth. So then we went around some local areas, Henry Barber uh, Park. That's also a very famous. Uh, you've proper, I think in eight properties, Henry Barber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's also up in uh, in uh, the city centre yeah. in the Birmingham University. You see yeah. a lot of by Henry Barber who yeah. he was. Then we started working around at Grange Road Park. Mm -hmm. um, then Hobmore Road Cross, Sarah Park, Digby Park, uh, Smallheath Park. Then also around the Garrison Lane, the Peaky Blinders uh, uh, pub. Um, around there, a bit of history of Peaky Blinders. Everybody's seen that Netflix and you know, so Birmingham's poor Birmingham, pretty much interested of you know, like. Uh, but it, but, it, but it's, it's quite interesting you talk yeah. about Pe Peaky Blinders, yeah. but um, uh, fortunately, I've been very privileged that I know people who grew up uh, at the time that Peaky Blinders were around. And they were like 12, 13 years old. So when that Peaky Blinders drama was first released on BBC, um, I asked the gentleman and I said, do you know about this? And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We grew up with this. I said, well, you know, it was around Bordesley and Small Ethan, but uh, the weather at St Andrews. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah. He, you know, we, we knew about it. And, and the, the fact that was a blessing between myself and the elderly gentleman, he was at least um, uh, 15 years older than me. And it was quite interesting. We, we talk about uh, our business relationships and whatever you. And suddenly, every week, we, we would talk about the, the, the show and the fact that he was reliving his youth because that really did happen. Whilst it was, it was fic some of those was fictions, but yeah. there was, there were, and, and it was quite, you know, and you don't realise how powerful some of that history is. Oh, because. yes. We also covered... Uh, St. Andrews. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, formerly known as Small Little Lions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the day. Back in the day. And uh, the Peaky Blinders, that is the actual That's right. facility which, That's right. They, That's right. which they did yeah, cover. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the response we had a lot from the Birmingham City football fans on you know, Facebook and uh, we brought on guys, you know. Uh, yeah. Birmingham City. Well, I'm, a, I'm a blues fan myself. Ma so. so what happened was that my uncle's a blues fan, and he said, "Let's go around the Birmingham City Football Stadium." Yeah, yeah. We were so we were so on, Bosley, Bosley Green, yeah. in small. Yeah, this small was time. this was due to the lockdown. Yeah, yeah, there was no blues matches. Yeah, yeah, there were no matches. So, no, no, so we decided to go around the uh, clean around Birmingham City Football Stadium. Ah, uh, okay. The cul de sac. So the one, um, the, the railway, railway end, and the railway, railway end, end yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because I remember the railway yeah. when I saw it. Yeah, yeah. And there was a lot of nitro oxide canisters which we removed yeah, from yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Is it like a party drug? Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. Of, this is a lot of antisocial behavior which we saw. So we shared all the photographs. When we first went yeah. there, there were so many nitro oxide right. canisters. It was like uh, Terminator 2. Yeah, yeah. There were, were all the coils yeah, yeah, of the bullets yeah, yeah. yeah, all yeah. on the floor. The well, floor. I've, um, during the lockdown period, I've actually been from a walk around the canal around there. Yeah. And the back end of the Blues Ground, there's the Grand Union Canal that goes through to Digbeth into the city centre. And I, I can picture what you're talking about, so I've actually seen yeah. all that. Yeah. Uh, and when we, when we got the Blues fans inspired by that, yeah. that, you know, no, who would actually go and clean yeah, that? Yeah, Unless yeah. it's the council, right? That's right. So Waste Warriors' name got even a bit more like, oh, attention. Oh, fantastic. fantastic. Well, over 30,000, uh, 30, 35,000 likes and lot, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. A, lot, a, lot fantastic. Of, a lot of, we got some support from the Blues and I said to my uncle, let's go Villa Grand now. He goes, no way, man. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, so don't yeah. go Villa Grand. My other uncle, Cameron, He's a big Villa fan, right, okay. and there's a bit of rivalry, you know, fan families. Yeah, you, you always get that in families. So, yeah, so Waste Warriors trying to get Villa and Blues fans together, but but that was a bit of a difficult task. Uh, so he goes, let's just stick to Blues. So so the Blues fans, we, we did a work around there. And also um, around Nietzsche's Parks, we did around Wing Yip. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So oh, we went around to this Nietzsche's Park Road. So the Wing Yip idea was when this COVID-19 happened, a lot of the... Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, xenophobia or, yeah, yeah. or against well, the, the, the Chinese the, the, people. There was right? against the Chinese people, yeah. So we said, come on, guys. I go, look, that's not racially 
you know, profile the Chinese people. So let's go to Wing Hip. Yeah. And so we went to dedicate towards Wing Hip. And look, that's Birmingham with diversity. And, you know, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just all, you know, it's just all uh, bad negativity. Going so, back to litter picking then, sure. what, what, can you, what can you suggest that will inspire people to be actively involved within our community? We have a very diverse community, yeah. but very few people are coming forward for litter picking. And I, I know in my own personal experience, but what can we do to engage the community? Because if I, if, I, if I meet you in the street and I'll say, yeah, 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 they're doing the job. Um, so somebody said to me on social media yesterday, you're, you're wasting your time and you need to go and uh, get some guidance. And I said, well, when, what guidance do I need to get? So said, well, it's a council job to do it. What, what do you say to people who say it's council job to do it? I, I honestly believe that um, education does start from home. So, you know, if, if, you, if you like to keep your home clean, and also you want to keep your street clean and then if your street is clean then the wider area becomes clean because I think it's a very good valid point I think it's all about um, you know you see the council they're a bit under pressure as well because like even with certain situations now with uh, Small Heath Park now for example they're coming out there once a week down there and then you've got Friends of Small Heath Park and the Pashtun Trust they come out and uh, they're supporting the council. So they are, and you know, the, the council, they, they ba basically they are providing equipment to a lot of these groups out there as well. Uh, but with the people who are saying it's a council job, to be honest, it's, it's a bit of our job too, because there's also the past like uh, where I have seen, there's a lot of like a lot of older people have noticed um, in Erlington Little Busters, there's a group there, uh, which um, they come out every week. And they've actually made it into like, you know, like five days a year of work and the weekend you got a free. That's just how around. It becomes a community event where you actually get to meet and greet people. And it becomes, a, you know, they the turn it into kind of fun as well, a fun event, activity. So whenever there's a problem in our area, such as there's a fly tip, we shouldn't just walk past it as an example. We should try to find out who's fly tipping around that, maybe install some CCTV, maybe start sharing on social media, Facebook, this is what I normally do as well, and I'm, and I stay in contact with um, the locals around there. And we have to work with the council, not go against them. I personally believe, because there are very easily to, you know, you know, like criticize about the council, um, you know. But when you actually see how sometimes underfunded a bit, just like the Westminster Police are a bit underfunded as well. And we're working with, sorry, I'll let you. With local authority, yeah. underfunding seems to be the statement of <laughs> post-COVID. Uh, everything you talk about, local authority, um, it comes across as underfunded. Um, we do appreciate there have been some cutbacks. We do appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. But, you know, the council does have some responsibility. Oh, and yes. furthermore, yeah. what you've got to understand is that, um, you know, there are, there are, there are reasons, and you've got to understand that, uh, you know, the council, uh, in the best will in the world, um, can do as, as much or uh, as little as they can. But going back, um, what you got to under, what we got to educate the community is, yeah. if I go to Adley Park and I take my packages of crisps and I take my drinks and what have you, and I take my packed lunch, mm -hmm. um, surely it's my responsibility when I finish with my sandwich that... Uh, plastic wrapping and whatever. When I finish with my packet of crisps, when I finish with my bottle, that's my responsibility to dispose of that properly, to put it in a bag and bring it back home. Or if there's a bin, and put it in the bin, exactly. but not just just throw it and expect the council no, no, to pick no. it up. And th this is the argument that I've always had with people. It's a very good point. I left Jiba. a bit of surprise. Assalamu alaikum, my brothers. Uh, firstly, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, begin with the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Uh, I'm surprised that people blame the council. Truly, it's not the council's fault. The council are doing a fantastic job. What we have to realize is that, you know, we big ourselves, we, we do fakhar, we do, Gigi. we have pride on Gigi. our religion. We're, we're pride on our religion. We say we're Muslims. What yeah. is a Muslim? Yeah. Where are the Muslims today? Because a Muslim is somebody who does a wudu five times a day. He cleanses himself yeah. before he establishes the prayer. He does wudu before he touches the text, the holy text of the Quran. 
they're praying more than five times of their prayer, the Hajjud or Namaz Shab. These things, uh, if we look at our faith, it is cleanliness is part of our faith. Al Nadafatu Minal Iman, Al Nadafatu Nisful Iman. That cleanliness is from the faith, or in another tradition, it states that cleanliness is half of one's faith. Islam has put so much emphasis upon cleanliness. In the Quran, it says, Qad aflaha man zakaha, wa qad khaba man dasaha. Surely he succeeded who purified his soul, and he uh, failed who made his soul dirty. So, as a Muslim, it is our responsibility to clean our surroundings. This is what a Muslim is. Become an insan. Insan, Allah says that insan is the best of creation. So we have to become the best of creation. How do we do that? We set an example. We set a president. We seek to be the change which we want in the world. There's a famous saying by Gandhi where it says, be the change you want in the world. If we want to change in the world, we have to change ourselves first. So we Mashallah. have to you know, be read, listen, yeah. it's being proactive, G -G -G -G. Be leadership skills. G -G -G. This is yeah. one of the main reasons of the West one is that we are trying to show the message to other people. No, Mashallah, you guys are doing a fantastic yeah. job. Just, uh, can I just hold that thought there? Uh, Javed Akhtar, um, Shukriya, thank you very much for joining my program as always. Javed Saab has said, we salute the West Warriors, every blessing and reward. Uh, for you doing all the community work. So they are, Javed is a very active community uh, activist, mashallah, and um, he's, he's very good. Um, thank, thank you, Brother Javed. Peer Vaseem also has said, nice, uh, nice program. Uh, another thank comment you. from Brother Javed is, um, it is not the council's job to clean the streets. Fantastic, I agree with you. The community to take ownership and keep their streets clean. The resources spent on street cleaning could be used elsewhere, such as youth centers and other communities. Now, if you look at the budgets that the local authority use mm -hmm. to arrange for these special pickups, arrange for these extra pickups yeah, where nice. they're picking up on mattresses and sofas and likewise, He's quite right. That resources could be used for youth centers and, and that's where that sure. could be redirected into other areas. Um, uh, Sadak Ali Kashmi said, Mashallah, excellent uh, about time. Uh, something was done about cleaning our areas. Um, uh, mashallah, he, he lives in Tam Tamworth, so he's, he's diff which is different from inner city Birmingham. Oh, but again, yeah. Tamworth has his own problems, mm -hmm. and and um, what, what you gotta what you gotta understand is that uh, BME community is not just in Birmingham. It, they have got a BME community in the likes of Tamworth. Yeah. Um, I've even been to places like. Um, uh, Spaldings in Lincolnshire, and there's a BME community there. Mashallah, uh, Allah Taala has give, blessed uh, the BME community in to be to be uh, resident in all parts of uh, the UK. Uh, what we find in inner city areas, because they're heavily densely populated areas, um, these areas are are as always um, highlighted because you have more extra rubbish per per head per capita than the likes of suburbs of likes of Tamworth, Sully Hall, Southern Goldfield. And point. I would like extra resources to go into these areas, but you know what it's like. The local mm -hmm. authority says, right, we've got so many uh, wards in the city, divide that by so many wards. The fact that uh, Small Heath has got extra population doesn't make any difference. And unfortunately, a lot of those resources don't stretch that area. But if our community takes a keen interest and, and as I, as I said, as example, we, we used example of Adley Park this week. Mashallah, yeah. we all spent an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. Look what massive change we made. Oh, yeah. And we went along as Radio Apke of ours, myself and my co-director um, of our program, Ikra Mirzai, we went out and we didn't go out for the photo call. We said, right, come on, let's have the bags. And we did, we did the job. And then within half an hour, Mashallah, we filled up two bags. And... We wanted to show that, you know, we are normal people as well. We are yeah. part of the community as well. And 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 it, it was clearly evident that some of those plastic bottles and some of those tins were under the growth of the grass. So they've been there for at least 12 months or whatever. Yes. And we had to like, even with my with my professional little picker tool that I got, uh, I had to like physically get it out of the grass yeah. to fill my bags up. And then yeah. one place that I uh, did, and that's available on the social media for people to view, um, it was the fact that um, 
10 minutes I was there and I just filled up the bag because there was so much <laughs> rubbish there and so much tins mm. and bottles there. And, uh, you know, my request went out to uh, the councillor, Councillor Mariam Khan, who was there on site to say, yeah. where you've got benches, where have you got benches for people to sit, have bins on either side, but more importantly, make sure they are emptied frequently. And the other thing I suggested was, make sure we have more benches because we want the community to enjoy our parks. For example, Birmingham, uh, in Birmingham, Adley Park was one of the first parks donated, gifted to the city of Birmingham by the Adley family. Wow. The next one in line was um, Washwood Heath Park, which was donated mm. to the city of Birmingham by the Hutton family. So if you go back in history, these people donated this land uh, for the benefit of the community, okay. Brother Ali. Can I add one as well? Uh, there's a uh, lot to add to that. Lloyd, Lloyd Park. Yeah, uh, yeah. Lloyd's Park. Park. yeah, yeah. That's Lloyd's house. <laughs> Lloyd's house, yeah, yeah. Samson yeah. Lloyd. Samson Lloyd. The, Samson Lloyd. Who is the TSP yeah, yeah. founder? Yeah, yeah, Samson Lloyd, Lloyd. yeah. Uh, if you look at some of the properties. Grange Road. If you Park. look at uh, some of the properties around Grange Road and that part of Spa Brook. Some of the, some of those properties mm -hmm. were literally part of the Samson Samson Lloyd Empire. Oh, yeah. And if you if you move across to the other part of the city, uh, Cannon Hill Park, if you look at the historic historic background of some of that, oh, some yeah. of these wealthy people donated that. And if you go towards um, Hansworth and Soho, and the, you, the likes of Mo, uh, Matthew Bolton and James Watt, you know, these people were wealthy individuals who donated these parks for the benefit of the community. And it's our duty to, to encourage and maintain these parks. Brother, sorry, I, I'm talking again too much. I'll pass no, it on no, to you. That was absolutely fine. Uh, you mentioned uh, very important things about these parks were once belonged to, you know, these are private, private land, which is now turned to Park. I also like to say about Small Heath Park particularly as well, that used to be called, uh, as I was reading this one book, um, it's got these photographs on there, and Small Heath Park was actually called Victoria Park. Victoria Park, yes, I remember. Uh, I remember. Queen, apparently Queen Victoria that's came right. on the grand opening of that's, Small Heath Park. That's, that's right. So for, for those listeners out there uh, right. to know about Small Heath Park, the Queen Victoria came <laughs> to the park and they stopped mm -hmm. like they had a uh, swimming pool, uh, sorry, yeah, there, swimming there, there, was, there, was, there was a swimming pool. It was, it was a uh, what you call an outdoor lido. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was there was a swimming yeah. pool facility. And they had like um, boats. That's right. There was, like, uh, yeah, boats in there. You could like canoeing. There was a there was a, 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 a boat, boating lake. I remember boating and, lake. <laughs> and, and the banister still stands there. And then like fast forward the time, yeah. we've had Nusrat Fatih Khan. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've had some historic moments in Smolly Park. Uh, 1990s, I believe, uh, Nusrat Fatih Khan came and did quality down there. Um, you know, so Smalley Park itself has got a lot of history there, and now it's become the biggest park in, I think, in uh, in uh, I just is in Birmingham for either of us. I think that was the biggest G -G -G in the uh, entire uh, Europe. I think it was the biggest in the European. Biggest. Uh, uh, Either of us attendance in G -G. Europe, G -G. so that tells you Smalley Park. So if we are, uh, if we are trying to demonstrate that you know the biggest Eden of Mars is in Smalley Park, and then secondly you look at the park is in a mess. So what example are we giving yeah. if we are trying to promote Islam about Eid, about Eden of Mars? You know, just Eden of Mars particularly, as Muslims are praying in that park. Then the next two days is mess everywhere. Why are you praying? So you know, pray. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. That's right. So you pray. So to make a mess. So yeah. so going. It's, it's quite. Uh, with, it's quite sad. With with because, with uh, uh, brother Safraz, you know, like you mentioned, you know, the cleansiness is half your iman. I actually used I used this uh, 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 as an education as a poster. I, I put in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam quoted, "Cleansiness is half your faith, half your iman." And the secondly, I put a, like another message, a biblical one. Um, keep the earth clean as your life depends on it. Genesis 2.15, that I put there as an interfaith. So so even uh, Christians and Muslims, because we have done work in the churches, yes. uh, uh, which is All Saints Church on um, uh, Her Herbert Road. Right? No, I think I've been near the Blues Ground. Yeah, okay. And we've done work with um, uh, masjids as well, um, on Country Road, Masjid Al Sunnah. We've done work with uh, um, Zio Luma, Imam Shahid, and we worked with the uh, President Dushad from uh, Senia. Yeah. And uh, so we yeah, like mosque. we like to work with mosques and churches, as I as I personally believe, and I like to tell the listeners out there that the masjids is a I think a very important place to get the message of cleansiness from the mosque and then bring that outside. And uh, as a reminder, 
you know, because obviously that's the voice where every Juma, every Friday is where they used to give a message of your local community on a Friday. And that's a platform which, which should be used. And now there are masjids out there, which I know myself, uh, which there are masjids out there. Like I said, Imam Shahid from Azul Umar on Victoria Street. There's uh, Imam Zaid from uh, Masjid Al Sunnah as well. So there are mosques out there which are involved in litter picking groups. They've actually created their own and uh, they are, you know, they're getting equipment and they're going out there. And also the churches are doing it. And I think the, the faith groups out there, which is very important to show that, you know, keep clean and keep and, and then bring that into, bring, 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 get these involved. So we have worked with mosques, we have worked in churches. Uh, my plan was also uh, before uh, I was on Pastor Safras that uh, Soho Road, um uh, plan to go down to the Soho Road and the Sikh temple down there is the biggest temple in uh, Europe. Well, in uh, Europe. Yeah, yeah, is it Europe? Yeah, 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 wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just thought it was Birmingham. No, 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 it's the biggest, biggest temple. Look, uh, amazing. So we plan to do that. And uh, so we're going to go down Soho Road. So I, so I had all these, like, try to get all the faith groups together and, you know, try to get everybody together. As a, you know, and, and, and one thing I always like to say is that on these little peak events, there's no race or there's no, no. barrier of, uh, of backgrounds or race or religion. These are all bring together. My own experience just now with Adley Park and Henry Barber Park, we just did. There was a Romanian community there. They were helping to clean up. There was a Somalian community there, helping to clean up. There was a Pakistani community there, helping to clean up. There was the English community there, helping to clean up. There was all different, uh, different colors, different races, different backgrounds. And it was all together doing one mission, keeping clean. This is yeah. this is what I say to people. Though, you know, you have the Pakistani community, yeah. you have the Kashmiri community, you have the Eastern European community. Yeah. You have different backgrounds, and we don't ask any questions of what faith do you exactly. follow, what have you. Our mission is to keep the park yeah. clean. But now that we've spent an effort in cleaning Adley Park, you know, we encourage the visitors, the regular, especially the regular visitors, please. Yeah. Take your rubbish home. If if the bin is full, just take your rubbish home. Yeah. And our request to the service providers are is maybe you look at emptying those bins frequently. So you see that some some bins, um, one or two bins have been vandalized. One or two bins you've got rubbish overflowing. Uh, some people don't finish their food, and you know that's you know that's again that's a message. Um, apologies, viewers and listeners. I know I'm running over the time a little bit, but I just wanted to make sure that we finish off the program properly. Just Brother Safras, what a final message, right? Uh, London. Uh, reflection, yes. right? It's very important for us as Muslims that we should reflect and ponder over things. There are over 300 Quran ayats in the Holy Majestic Book, the Holy Quran, which point out to this uh, thing, say, Afala to dabirun, Afala to fakirun. Why do you not ponder? Why do you not think? You know, we have to, as Muslims, act like Muslims. What do Muslims do? We pray five times a day. We cleanse ourselves. If we are not affecting the surroundings around us, we are not proper Muslims because it is part of our duty. You know, it is said that we should know 40 of our neighbors. Yeah. As a, how many of our neighbors, if, if we see rubbish on the street, we should pick it up. You know, would you pray in, uh, in, a, in a heap of rubbish? Because basically that's what you are making Birmingham right now. Yeah. Because you're not, you know, people are chucking rubbish out of the cars, eating, driving past. Bags are being thrown out as if you know, there are roses. It's a terrible state. Uh, but as Muslims, we have to reflect and think, are we really Muslims? We're not the Muslims. Because if Muslims are clean, then the streets should not show that. They should not show that, yeah. I appreciate that. Can, can I add to something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you mentioned earlier as well, you, you mentioned good... Uh, thank you, Sufraz. You mentioned also about, you know, if the bins are over full and, and what we should do. I just want to emphasize on that. So, there is, in Smalley Park particular, I like to go on to that, and there's also other parks as well. But but when the bins are, Smalley Park's a very busy park. There's a lot of people there, and, uh, you know, regularly, um, friends of Smalley Park and uh, Pashtun Trust, they come out once Gee. a week, Gee. and they do a little pick there. Gee. They come in at 100 bags, 100 bags uh, on the weekend, right? And so the council come out once a week down there. And 
So when with these bins are over full, there's a lot of people coming in and out. You've got the shops on Country Roadside as an example. They're coming down. And that that basically park itself itself. So when the bins are full, all you gotta do is just take the rubbish with you. And if you want to eat in the park, take it with you. Don't put the rubbish next to the bin because also now um the park is contaminated. Yeah. This is also came upon um I am Birmingham, uh Rung Zeb Hussein, who runs a uh, um he runs his newspaper and uh, we've appeared on his uh, newspaper a few times and he's done a great job in highlighting all the local community around uh, all the local news around Birmingham. So the park's contaminated, you've had the I think the shadow minister. Well, I can think I think she, one point yeah, 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 sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, carry, carry on, carry on. Park contamination. What do birds eat? They do not eat roti and they do not eat bread. No, no, no. This causes the birds to die. Die, yeah, actually, actually. Uh, you need to get, feed get, birds. Get stuck seeds. in the throat. Yeah. Yes. They right. cause them gastric problems, gives right. them diarrhea or That's whatever. Right. But birds do not eat roti. So no, it's no. within our culture that we think, let's not chuck the bread and roti no. away. Let's feed the birds. But it's a wrong, uh, it's a wrong uh, idea. I think that's a very good point because you know it, there's a lot of signs that there. there's a feeded seeds because they, they digest the system, the ducks digest system. But well, well, I, I, I have read about ducks yeah. for argument's sake. Yeah. Uh, the, in our in our Pakistani Kashmiri culture, if there's four people in the house, make four roti on. Don't make five. Don't make six. <laughs> make four roti on, right? And if you yeah. need more, just make another one quickly. And the reason for that is because um, there's there's this. Uh, Pakistani Kashmiri culture whereby you say ah yeah we'll, we'll, we'll break it up and we'll feed it to the birds so they, there's a certain um, just up the road here in Alam Rock there's a certain uh, precinct where just literally throw there because they want the birds to eat it but what they don't realise is Small by putting that, that it encourages vermin and encourages the rats to come out and encourage and also the birds don't eat that and if they do eat that it gets stuck in their throat That's and right. effective, effectively you you they they starve themselves with oxygen and they yeah, they effectively we, kill themselves. That's, I, I, that's exactly what happens. We've what we've seen is on the ground we see roti, we see pasta, yeah, we see chawal, yeah. We see oh yeah, yeah, anything yeah. which meant anything. I know we, we laugh and joke about it, but Honestly, people do so, put, throw yeah, jar yeah. to say right, you I, know, it's cooked, should, cooked rice and yeah, the birds in, they were all touchy. Yeah, honestly, some of the stuff which are fine, I'm like, you know, we could just chuck them the black bag. Yeah, and, uh, you know, but they they thinking I don't know what it is, but I think they try to think who people are doing it. The regulars, by the way, these are like the regulars which are coming to the same location, throwing the rice there, throwing the pasta there. They're thinking that is a good deed, but in fact, it's not a good deed; it's a bad deed. Um, because you're not feeding the birds or the ducks, you're, your... feed, you're feeding the rats, and the rat. And, and I just, just sorry, I just want to just say. So whether, so even there's, I've noticed the BBC Council put up a, a post. Sorry, they put a like a signboard, and it's actually written in five languages, and it clearly with a no entry sign on there. Don't and it's got like a bird picture and, and like don't feed the bird. And it's got five languages, so everybody, someone's gonna understand one of those languages, right? That it says don't feed the birds. The, and you see, so in Smalley Park particularly, I keep bringing that one up because that pond right now is still. Uh, I don't know if they've. I think, I, think I, I went there about uh, uh, was a, yeah, was a week ago just to just to get some evidence. To be honest, there's so much algae on that algae, pond, yeah. isn't it? Exactly, that algae is risen up, and and honestly, it's, it's a terrible sight. And we have to, you know, we don't want to. We have to bring out these things onto the talk because this is truth. You know, we'd like to tell the true things on the ground. Yeah, the thing is, brothers, you know, no, we don't uh, hide anything. You are groundwork activists so yeah. it's always a pleasure to talk to people like you because you are giving me real life examples and yeah i know there are times when i go out yeah. in the areas and i go out and check check my my evidence and my resource and you're right you know we need to do something at ground level and the fact that i'm going to throw some roti i'm going to throw some chowl in a pond right uh, firstly with with all that algae that's in there you'd be surprised if there are any swans still kicking around in there uh, and secondly uh, a lot of uh, a lot of those swans have died because that that uh, pond is actually contaminated oh, with, with, oh, with yes. you know what people have been throwing in there it is the pond's contaminated and you know and the, I also believe Smalley Park they they need a, basically like a caretaker yeah they need a regular one. Canada Hill Park has one. Unf unfortunately, unfortunately, places like Smallheath yeah. Park, uh, some of the other local parks, 
because of cutbacks. Obviously. Like I said to you in the beginning, I could always put it down to cutbacks and cutbacks. Yeah. But if their resources are not put on to picking up the extra waste, Definitely. the ex extra funding that's spent oh, yes. to to com clean our streets, where we've put the mess there, so I've thrown a crisp packet in front of my house. I've mm -hmm. thrown a crisp uh, kind of. Uh, uh, after drinking, I was going to use a brand name there, after drinking some soft drink, I throw an empty can there and I expect the strategy services to pick that up. That's a resource that I'm wasting. And this is what we're saying to people is clean your front garden, clean your front yeah. uh, front of your house. And if, if you're exactly. doing your neighbour, you, you know, you're doing a bit of a sadka work and, and, and your neighbours yeah. on either side. And if your neighbours on either side see that you're doing uh, this week, maybe they do yours next week. And gradually, you know, if we can have like uh, 40, 40 neighbours on either side, suddenly the, 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 the road becomes a, a nice, pleasant area. And, and more and more people, when you drive, when you drive through places like parts of uh, Alton, Alton Boulevard, uh, Shirley, uh, Solly Hall, you know, it's a lovely, clean area. But uh, I was, I had the um, uh, unfortunate uh, privilege to go up to um, uh, parts of uh, North Sutton Goldfield, and uh, this is where it's uh, by by the um, by the cover star up there. And um, uh, I said it was unfortunate because because um, there was a, there was a burial that I uh, wanted to make sure that I go there. And I saw an elderly gentleman. He must have been in his must have been about seventies, and he was walking along the path with his little, little picker and with his bag. And I thought, yeah. you know, I take my hat off to you, Uncle. You're doing a fantastic job. Yeah. And as far as he's probably concerned, he's you know he's a retired gentleman. He's probably come out for a bit of walk, a bit of fresh air. And you can see that he you know he he, he had his bag about half full. And you can see people like that are making a difference. Why can't our community come out in these areas? And why can't people whether whether it's early in the morning? or uh, now we're still in the summer we don't get uh, evenings don't get darker until about October why can't our community come out valid point very good point our communities need to promote more things at the mosques for definitely about cleanliness let should they should have more litter picking events in the mosques telling people how serious the problem is if you if you haven't realized it's a global problem it's not just Birmingham. No, no, no. It's it's yeah, uh, it's, it's plastic a, poisoning. Plastic poisoning is a national problem, and like oh, I said, I yeah. I raised this issue with some corporate uh, organisations, and I I raised this issue with uh, 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 a global fund manager who invests billions of pounds on behalf of pension funds and billions of pounds, yeah. and I said, well, I know what your your uh, issue is. Yeah, put plastic recycling in the UK, get them on the back of a lorry, put them on a boat, send them to the Far East, and what the Far East do is throw them into the ocean. <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, well, I wash my hands, fine, it's not my problem anymore. And, you know, um, people laughed and joked about that, uh, but actually, that is what's happening. It's similar to with the plastic bags now, before the, you know, when you go shopping, yeah. plastic bags were free, yeah. and now you have to pay, like, was it 10p now? Yeah, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 pence. Yeah, to, it's it's to got, to got up to 20, 20, 20 pence now, the, yeah. the, they put it up so you don't stay dependent on the bags and you keep using your old bags. Yeah. And uh, every time I go shopping, I end up buying a new bag every time because I end up leaving my, my bags in the house. I got, I got loads of bags in my own house. Um, but you know, when you your good question was about our community, yeah. the local community, local which, community a lot, like small, like small Eath, Alum Rock, you know, uh, even the registration is based in Alum Rock. So from Alum Rock to small Eath, and we're based in small Eath, Waste Warriors is small Eath based. So about the local community here, I honestly believe that we need um, inspiration and I believe we need motivation and we need leadership yes. and I believe we need teamwork and I believe that we need a, a, a solid focus to think of the generations ahead of us. The brother before this show came, um, the, the the brother, what was his name? Yeah, Shaquille. Shaquille, Shaquille just before us yeah, here. Yeah. He says something very important. He goes about get this, you know, get the young, some, about the young, get them starting sports, so to stay away from this antisocial behavior, get them involved in sports. Same thing with sports. I like to put keeping clean, keeping, you know, keeping your city clean, you know, show them the way that look, don't throw rubbish down there, use litter pickers. So these litter picking events, and also we do work with the, the Bozzy Green Police, Sergeant Paxton's team. And I think they've been very successful about six events now. I've happened, we've done uh, like Digby Park, we've been, 
um, we've been Henry, Henry Barber. Henry Barber. Yeah. Park. Now, now you've been involved and in Adley Park been as well. Henry Park with the Washington Police, and that was the first event with Washington Police they, because they've seen the pattern yeah, yeah. of Sergeant Paxton's team no, of good. the Westminster Police. Good. So, yeah, so yeah. the Washington Police said, "We're going to uh, come into Henry Park." And that's when I met Brother Joved, I met yourself, Brother I mean, and I met Alam Rock Community Forum, I met uh, the, the ca uh, Sister Councillor uh, Mariam. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, amazing people we met. And these events actually help people to know each other, networking, and that way we can get, like, the neighbours together as well. It's all, about, it's all about the local people of the area, you know, the local people where you live. <laughs> is you guys are the future and is your children are the future. So we have to pass the message on to our children and not just leave it to the council. Because if we just keep saying it's the council's job and then and then we just walk past the rubbish every time. And you know, the, some of the sights you see when you're walking past, the smell, the stench, sometimes when you're driving past, some of these visions you see of a sofa chucked out, a trolley chucked out, uh, bags piled up. This has become a common norm for us. This is becoming like an everyday sight, you know, where we just drive past. And then when you drive a bit further out of, drive a bit further away, it looks like you're in a different area, like different, you know, like I went to Devon, right? And honestly, it's like... Totally, totally different. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> you see, you see um, and the uh, beach and I've, the... I've had a privilege to go to Spalding, Lincolnshire, yeah. Grantham, um, yeah. um, and uh, recently uh, I went to um, Anglesey. In North yeah, Wales, wow. oh, lovely, and uh, I drove along the coast, and that was the first thing that came in through my head. I was looking for plastic bags or plastic bottles, you know, and I'm thinking, well, where are they? Last week, uh, I went to Green Lane, uh, just for the, that stretch from Green Lane to Herbert Road. GGD. Yeah, yeah. There was a hundred litter bags Marshall. chucked on the street. Marshall. See, that's well, wrong. We need to really seriously think: Seriously, what are we doing yeah. to prevent this problem? Yeah, yeah. Because if we don't change it now, there will be a, God forbid, a plague. You know, a plague. You know, it was, it was with the rats. They came and they bought women on the street. People start dying. Yeah. The, you know, forget COVID nineteen. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a bigger problem. That's, a, bit, that's a bigger problem. Yeah. You know, I, and and there are many a times when I talk about the plague, and I I talk about what the plague did to the city of London. And um, there's a comment on our chat box. Um, Ajay Dikbal has said, um, Shukriya, thank you for joining my program. Uh, apologies, viewers and listeners. Uh, we are running an extended show here tonight because the conversation is just just so riveting and so informative that I want you to make sure that we, in we ensure we carry on this conversation. Inshallah, I'll be wrapping it up in a couple of minutes. Um, Mujahid has said, the, school, the schools need to start educating and teaching kids at a, when they're young. Um, yeah, what was his name? Mujahid. Mujahid. Mujahid, that's a very, very good point. Mujahid, you're a warrior. You're a warrior, that's a very good that's point. What your name but, 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 but I mean, you say, you say first. You know, but you see, but what you've got to understand is that uh, schools can only do so much, right? As parents, we have a duty and a responsibility yes. to our children. We send our children to be educated to school, but when they when they come home, uh, you know, the school doesn't give them tarbiyat about how to do wuzu. The school doesn't give them tarbiyat about uh, Islamic classes and all that. That's that's where our responsibility comes in. And if we can bring that in in our part of our daily life, uh, mashallah, it makes a big difference. And and if you embed, embed that into a child at a very very early age, I mean. My blood boils when I'm driving along and somebody opens a window and there goes a plastic uh, 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 crisp packet out the window. You know, you, you know, you're so frustrated because, you know, you work hard, you, you put so much effort to do your street cleaning and this is what people do. Yes. Well, it was a good question about Mujahid, about a good suggestion. But the first school for anyone is their mother. That's right. That's right. And... Uh, uh, you know, it's very important that we start our uh, initial start. Uh, uh, initial studies at home. Yeah, and at we home. Would, yeah. 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 So, you know, when so, we, so you're basically, when we you're teach basically our education children to pray, uh, do wuzu, yeah. you're teaching them That's back right. to the That's right. That's right. Uh, we need to practice it more uh, openly. Uh, you know, if somebody's throwing a can, if you see a child, God forbid, tell them don't drop that can. You know, if you see somebody else dropping the cat, we need to voice our opinions. We can't stay oblivious. We can't stay silent. Because your silence 
is a tacit approval that you're saying it's okay for you to drop the letter. But if you don't speak and tell them people, you know, we are also going to be judged for their mistake because we didn't tell them. There you are. You've got another way to uh, response from my uh, brother, can I, can uh, from Majority's 100% starts with the parents. So there you are. You're up. There you are. Uh, and uh, brother Majority, I'd like to also add, you, it's a very good question. Um, you know, it's a, uh, you know, we've worked with some schools, uh, Ark Victoria School, and the teacher named Muhammad, he, he actually called me and my friend Mike from Medical Litter Busters. And uh, we invited onto his, um, his school assembly, and it was about Earth Day. So the schools do have one about the environment, and the schools in small Eat, and that was one I attended. Um, it was like a Zoom, it was like a Zoom meeting. School, schools do. They have, they have the school as part of as yeah. part of their curriculum. Yeah. Every year they do cover it. They do have like an Earth Day. Earth Day. They have an Environment Day. Yeah. The the idea is you engage the children. The children come up with the ideas about. What can we do with a plastic bottle, you know, and, and the whole process. And they educate the children about what happens with a plastic bottle yeah. and the recycling process. So the idea is, the, is there, but that needs to be uh, embedded in people at a very early stage. De definitely. I totally agree with you. From the younger, yeah. the, the, the younger they are, the better. So it starts from that age school. This is like a primary school. Mm -hmm. And like uh, Brother Mean said, the, with the recycling was one of the important, and also building trees, uh, you know, how to build a tree, building plants, work around plants. And the same group, when they did the Earth Day, they actually did a litter picking event in Smalley Park. So as soon as they had the, the assembly, they went out to litter pickers. Mashallah. And Mashallah. these young kids, volunteers, uh, the, the, the class activity was going to litter pick event. And we never had that. When I was in school. No, no, no. I don't think you had that. I, don't think I, you had I, think, that. I think what it was is what you've got to understand is um, there was a lot of uh, issues about safeguarding and security of the child leaving the school premises. Yeah. And it, what you've got to also remember is the one teacher was responsible for about 30, 35 children. There wasn't anything like a classroom assistant. Yeah. Now, mashallah, when, when children go out into the area, there's a ratio. Uh, they are extra support staff. They are uh, 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 classroom assistants as well. Uh, and that's why. And uh, now also, I feel that in the um, in the education world, people have realized that we can teach as much as we like in the classroom. But if we teach children to pick litter, what have yeah. you, maybe that Perfect. will stay in their minds a lot more than, than physically, I think uh, physically picking up litter. If we pick up the litter in front of our children, it will be shown the example. G -g -g -g. Uh, as opposed to telling the child to pick it up because nobody likes to be told what to do. And we like we need to be the example for other people. Well, the, the, the local authority is planning for posters to be put on certain hotspot areas. There's a plan to put CCD cameras in certain hotspot areas. Oh, yes. Uh, and people will be watching them. There is evidence gathering that's happening, and that's for the authorities I'll, to decide. I would like to touch on that. You mentioned CCTV. I think that's very important, especially with antisocial behaviour. Um, you know, there's like a drugs. Uh, when we, when we, as waste warriors, when we first went out, our focus was just picking up litter. Then afterwards, afterwards, it was the nitro oxide canisters or silver canisters you yeah, might yeah. find on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those can even, um, you know, pop up the tires, you know, if, yeah, you, yeah, if your yeah, car yeah. goes yeah, on. Yeah, it, if you hit them at 20, 30 miles an hour, yeah. Yeah, it'll damage your tire. And then you've had, you've had... Dropping litter should be considered as antisocial behavior. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Uh, the, so the drugs, so the drugs we've, um, we've come across, I'll, not, I'll just like give some names out. Nitro oxide canisters. And then also you've got the um, heroin needles, which we do find in parks. And this is also going a, a bit towards the topic of uh, the the HMOs, which are popping up quite a lot around. I don't want to go into a different topic totally, but uh, there, there's a lot of information coming out. The HMOs, there's, there's people who are begging and they want the money. And they, they're buying that and then they're going to the parks. They're going to park locations, discrete locations, and they leave the heroin needles behind. And then we it happened in Grange Road Park where the Westminster Police were there. They made some arrests at the abandoned pub, and then afterwards, uh, and then the, then the locals. Um, I'll give a shout out to Haroon. He's a one of my local. Apolo neighbors. Apologies, brother. Let's sorry. not get into too much sorry. detail. Sorry, but, yeah. sorry. I, I won't go into too much no. detail. We contact the landlord. Yeah. He he resealed the fence. Yeah. So they stopped the antisocial yeah. behaviour yeah. in that building. Yeah. 
And so that park is now a drug-free park. Yeah. So the local neighbours who, who I know, they push that. So Not that sure, park man. is now a drug-free park. Now there's other parks out there. Um, I can't give all the names, but there are park locations. All I'm going to say is park locations which are being used for antisocial behaviour like these drugs, which I think, you know, it, it's it's something which we're becoming quite common as litter pickers. We, we, we are seeing more needles, we're seeing nitroxide canisters, we're seeing all these things, antisocial behaviour. And I think that's why with some of these police police teams coming out, they're joining with litter picking groups and they want to kind of cut down on this antisocial behaviour, which is, which is this. And then thirdly, there's uh, wildlife protection, which we're also getting involved in. And, uh, you know, trying to, you know, so wildlife, drugs and litters, litter. These three are our main Brother, it's, it's been lovely talking Thank to you. you. And if we can have a final few words yeah. and then we'll uh, wrap up my program for tonight. To, to the public, my beloved, uh, if you see something going wrong, please tell people that something is going wrong. So report it to the authorities. Report to the authorities. You know, be part of a network of a community watch areas. You know, if you see people are you know, using drugs in the area, or if you see people parking cars and you know what is happening there, you know, don't stay quiet. You need, if you want, you, you know, the change around you, you need to speak and tell people because otherwise it's going to carry on. Drugs is a big, big problem. If you, if you don't think about, don't think about yourself, think about your children. Because they are the next year. What, uh, what sort of world are you going to be bringing your children into? And we want the best for us and our children. Thank you. So, Brother Safraz. Brother Ali, uh, final uh, wrap-up words from you, please. I'm going to give a little shout Can I give a little shout-out to you? Thank you. Yeah, feel free. First, I would like to give a shout-out to Brother Amin on this wonderful oh, bless show. You. Thank you. Thank you very uh, much. You know, always tune in to Abki Boz. Also, to find more about us, we're the wastewarriors.club. That's our website. Just a few shout outs uh, to people who have been connected. I am Birmingham. Rungzeb Hussain runs a Birmingham newspaper. Uh, thanks for him giving a shout out uh, to us when we first started this. Uh, Mike from uh, Early Delita Busters, uh, Green Spaces. Barry from MTF Academy, who um, has a football can football can be yes, good. Yes, yes, I'm you know, you know Barry. Yeah, yeah, Barry. Yeah, Fantastic. Then the Sergeant uh, Paxton from Westminster Police. Uh, thank you for these uh, community events you've organised. Uh, Javed from uh, Alam Rock Alam Community Rock Forum. Forum. Bless him, yeah. Big shout to Javed. He's, he's constantly on the go, yeah. bless him. Yeah. Well done, uh, Javed. And uh, Brother Basharat from MMI. Yeah. Um, when he gave me a platform to speak on there. Then uh, Harun Pitch to Progress, another football academy group. Thank you to Harun. Uh, Gul Pak Pashtun Association. Um, Aisha from Dream Chasers Youth, another football association. And then some of the mosques, Imam Shahid from Zioluma. Imam Zaid um, from uh, Masjid Al Sunnah and um, and uh, Brother Tahir from Somerville Mosque and uh, President Dashad from Husseinia Mosque and uh, friends of Small Eat Park, uh, Muhammad and Elaine and Whole Green Keeping It Clean. It's another litter picking group in Whole Green. You could uh, join, I think name's Neela. Yeah. And there's also uh, uh, Sister Shaheen. She just needs some support around Digby Park. Um, so anybody who's around the Digby Park area, well, every Saturday she's what we'll, what we'll do is I'll finish off the program with uh, thanking um, yourselves, Brother Ali, uh, Brother Safraz. Really appreciated your time and effort oh, this oh, evening. Oh. As you know, I've uh, I've, 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 I've got into overtime with my colleague Vasila here. Bless her, she's been sitting patiently and just been uh, allowing me to carry on. Thank you so and much. Well, and as as you always, the whole idea of this program is to get the community information out. And anybody that we've mentioned in the program, anybody who's interested in any litter picking, please contact the studio on 07 844 Inshallah, we'll put you in touch with these brothers and we will be advertising um, litter picking events on uh, social media. So if you are on Facebook, please look out for it, whether it's Salkley, Alan Rock, um, my... my um, my colleagues on Allen Rock Community Forum do a fantastic job in Ward End. Uh, as some of you know, I'm involved actively in the litter picking exercise in the Salkley area. Brothers uh, uh, Ali and Safraz are around in the 
uh, small ETH as well, but as you said, they've done the scenic route and they've tried to learn more about the historic uh, re, uh, his, history of Birmingham, which, you know, fantastic. It's a way of getting around the city and getting out to some of the other parts of the city. And uh, once again, I really appreciate you taking your time out and listening to my program. And inshallah, until next time, uh, shukriya and khadahafiz and stay safe and look after yourself. Thank you and good evening. Goodbye. Birmingham ki sabse pehli masjid aur UK ki dusri masjid ki bunyad. Thank you very much, sister. Sorry, I'm really taking your time.